WSIT stands for Web Services Interoperability. Uh, interoperability. Um, so let's see what WSIT is all about. Okay. So first, we are going to talk about the level of interoperability, and then we are going to see which level of interoperability WSIT is trying to address. And then we are going to talk about WSIT features and uh, then we are going to see how to configure WSIT. So as as you are going to see later on, WSIT actually you know includes security, reliability, MTOM and things like that. So here in this presentation uh, I'm gonna just give you a big picture of what the WSIT is all about and uh, then we're gonna actually have uh, the other presentations on reliability and MTOM and security. Okay? Alright so if you talk about if you think about the levels of interoper interoperability between two communicating partners uh, you can think of interoperability at different levels uh, or different layers okay on the bottom we have a transport uh, level uh, the uh, interoperability so HTTP, SMTP, TCP and others okay so I mean this transport has to be common uh, between two communicating parties before they can communicate right and then we have what is called the uh, wire protocol uh, interoperability. So we are talking about data binding. This is something I actually talked about when we talk about the uh, you know SOAP, right? Uh, they have to use a common encoding schemes, uh, even if they are using common transport. Uh, for example, unless they agree upon how an integer or string is supposed to be uh, presented, uh, represented uh, the uh, on the wire, then they are not going to be able to actually communicate. Okay, so in web services, you know, we all agree that the data types are supposed to be based on XML schema. Okay, uh, the common info set is basically what that we are actually talking about as well. So again, we are talking about XML schema based info set. And then we have a system level of uh, the interoperability. In fact, this is the focus of WSIT. So here we are talking about security and trust models and uh, reliable messaging and things like that. Okay. So if you want to send your message in reliable fashion, you know, one and only one's reliability level, uh, they have to agree upon that reliability, uh, the, uh, the uh, le you know, layer in of interoperability. Uh, unless they agree upon that, they are not going to be able to communicate with the same thing with the security. You know, if uh, the service says that whenever somebody, some client wants to communicate with me, I need to have them to send X, you know, the uh, 509 certificate. Uh, uh, and if that is, if that requirement is not met by the client, meaning if the client does not send the message with that kind of security aspect as part of the SOAP header structure, then there will not be any interoperability. So we are talking about the uh, system level interoperability and that's what the WSIT is focused on okay and of course you have application level interoperability and this is completely application specific so that's not something that we are going to be concerned about here okay from WSIT standpoint so what is WSIT so WSIT is basically Java implementation of WS star specifications in the area of security, reliability, and transaction, and uh, the uh, the uh, 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 and other uh, uh, other domains. Okay, and it's built on the top of WS uh, Jax Web Services. So Jax Web Services support uh, the WSIT. So again, the goal is to be able to interoperate with other vendors, uh, web services web other vendors, web services implementation, which support you know the same set of uh, the features of security, reliability, and transaction, and uh, the uh, the uh, uh, binary message transfer and things like that. Okay, so WSIT. Uh, the, uh, is basically you can think of it as a Java implementation of this WS star specifications. So we're going to actually see some of this WS star specification later on. So WS star specification includes specifications regarding security, reliability, transaction, addressing, and things like that. Okay. So if you see web services stack on the WSIT, uh, this is what you'll probably see. On the bottom we have a transport and we have uh, the, on the top of it we have uh, data binding. So this is what we're talking about is encoding levels. If you actually see, uh, we're talking about this wire 
protocol which covers uh, encoding okay and uh, then we have uh, soap based messaging okay so mtom and uh, web services with attachment soap with attachment and then where and then we have uh, the uh, the system level uh, functionality such as uh, security reliability transaction and things like that and also metadata such as the WSDL and uh, message exchange policy and things like that so again WSA, WSIT focused on this layer this layer of interoperability this guy okay and on the top you have an application so this picture is the same thing except here we actually specify what is the WS star specifications in regard to security, in regard to reliability, in regard to transaction, in regard to metadata. Okay, So here in web services security area you have uh, several uh, specifications, web services, web services security specification, uh, the uh, WS security specification, WS trust specification, WS security conversation uh, specification and things like that and on the reliability there are two specifications uh, WS reliability messaging and WS reliability messaging policy specification so when we say WS star specification we are talking about the collection of all these WS uh, specifications uh, in regard to security, reliability, transactions and metadata all right, so let's move on to WSIT features. So here we are mostly focused on uh, reliable messaging and security and atomic transaction, optimized communication and bootstrapping communication. And we are going to cover uh, these two uh, in a separate specification, uh, separate presentation. So bootstrapping communication is basically uh, defined by WS Metadata Exchange. It's basically how to get WSDL document of the service. Okay, so as we learned so far, you know, WSDL document is the contract is the D contract between client and server, and that should include all the contracts that are needed for client and the server to be able to communicate, and that should include the system level requirements such as security and reliability and transaction. Uh, optimized communication. So this is something that we are going to talk about in separate uh, presentations. So it defines wire format optimization and uh, it is represented by MTOM and XOP. So uh, this is from W3C. So this is how you can actually transmit binary data as MIME attachments. Uh, and uh, it avoiding base64 encoding. Okay, so we are going to actually talk about these things in detail in separate presentations. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about here, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it also actually talk about fast infoset. Uh, fast infoset is uh, a way of uh, the uh, the improving web services communication performance. Uh, the the thing, well, you know, we use the t uh, you probably have heard the term infoset a couple of times. Okay, but I didn't explain the concept of it uh, in detail. So let me actually take this opportunity to explain what XML InfoSet is all about. Okay, the concept of XML InfoSet was introduced, in fact, the SOAP 1.2 and WSDL 1.2 as well. Uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, before XML InfoSet, the way that you are going to send XML document is basically uh, XML XML uh, the uh, string. Okay. Uh, now, the uh, the uh, you know it, it it actually is not it's actually just sending all the XML document in the XML native format is not actually uh, good from the performance perspective. Okay, so let me give you an example. Suppose if you're trying to send XML document that contains uh, you know ten thousand ten thousand times of a particular uh, address element. Okay. Uh, you know, if you are trying to send that XML document it's like in native format, uh, it might actually uh, the, uh, have a 10,000 repetition of an element, right? Okay, it's address element. Okay. Now, uh, the uh, the uh, you know, it doesn't have to actually send the XML native format. Instead, what could be done is that you could actually send some kind of uh, uh, DOM element, you know, that has the meta information indicating that, yeah, this is the uh, uh, address element and has to be repeated 10,000 times, okay? 
So having some kind of meta information indicating that this particular element has to be repeated 10,000 times, as long as communicating partners understand that has to be done, then you can actually send this DOM object that contains this metadata to the server. Server should be able to recreate that XML document, right? So the uh, the reason they actually introduced this uh, XML info set is that you know the uh, the uh, the representation of XML does not have to be in XML native format. Okay, it could be in fact different form. All right, as long as communicating partners can actually have an understanding of how to recreate the XML document at the end. Okay, well they don't really have to actually create the XML document at the end. You know, basically all they want is some kind of object in order to actually represent it, right? So at you know in the end point they actually receive that this DOM object and then actually like they, they can actually create uh, the uh, some kind of object representation of it without going through the uh, the native XML uh, the the uh, format. So fast info set is uh, the another uh, scheme. Uh, that take advantage of XML info set concept. In this case, instead of send, sending uh, the uh, native XML document, it might actually send the uh, a binary format of it, as long as uh, the uh, communicating partners understand it. So, uh, the uh, the uh, you know, but in this case, uh, the the uh, the binary format has to be understood based on XML schema. So as long as communicating partners have a common understanding of XML schema, then binary data can be actually transported instead of the uh, native XML data, right? Uh, so it will actually improve the performance significantly. Uh, so that is basically what the fast info set concept. Okay. All right, and these things are all transparent to your application. You know, as an application developer, you don't have to understand, you know, how these things are done underneath. After all, this is all, uh, you know, the uh, protocol level implementation, right? Okay. Okay, so how to configure with the uh, WSIT? So developers write consumer providers via web services, uh, JAX web services, and EJB APIs. So you don't actually deal with any runtime APIs for WSIT at all. You basically supply some configuration file to enable and control project. Yeah, so Tango used to be the code name of this WSIT. So I should actually move this one. Nobody's, u nobody's using this term anymore. Okay. Okay, so you can configure a file written by hand. You can actually create that configuration by configuration file by hand, or you can produce uh, using WSIT NetBeans module. So we're going to actually leverage NetBeans to create WSDL document, WSDL conf WSIT configuration file. Okay, so here this is the server programming model. So uh, you can actually create this WSIT configuration file, and uh, then uh, the deployment uh, during the deployment time, this is going to be used to create all the pieces that are needed. Okay, so you don't really have to deal with anything. Okay, so uh, any implementations that support WSIT uh, should actually be able to create whatever that is needed. Okay. Uh, same thing on the client side. Okay, so client artifacts should be able to be created uh, from uh, the tool, and uh, it should be able to, uh, you know, it should be able to uh, create uh, the whatever stub code that understands whatever you specify. Okay, so in this case, uh, the client artifacts are created from WSDL documents. So WSDL documents should actually include all the WSIT features, whether that is a security related or reliable messaging related, or the uh, the MTOM related, or fast info set related, uh, WS import tool should be able to handle it, meaning it should be able to read WSDL document and should create correct stuff that understands how to create a SOAP message that contains the uh, SOAP header structure that is relevant to security, reliability, and uh, transaction, and uh, the, uh, the uh, MTOM and fast info set and things like that. All right, so that is the end of the presentation. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what the uh, WSIT is all about.